Hello and welcome to The Library Show. Thanks for joining us. I'm Holly Browning with my co-host Mike Kletzley and we've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about some newly released biographies and autobiographies that might help you get jump started in your reading this year. We're going to be talking about a driver's education database and also Miss Connie's going to be here for a wonderful story time. But up first, I believe Mike is going to share with us a really interesting autobiography. What do you have for us, Mike? Well, Holly, I thought I'd start with a book that I read most recently uh -huh. called No Surrender. And it's a story of a World War II hero okay. whose son discovered his story by poking through the attic one day when his daughter, which would be the granddaughter of the soldier, had to do a family history project. Oh, you're kidding. No, so she had to do family history. I knew that this would This one, yes, it. this I, is I, right I, up my alley. Perfect. I knew it would be. Yes. So she had to do a homework assignment, so the son dug up in the attic and found the written story of his, his dad, the grandfather, yeah. in World War II, and he talked about how his dad had a um, very heroic act that has lived on to this day. Really? Basically, his dad's unit was captured in the Battle of the Bulge, okay. and they were sent to a German prison camp. And in the course of that time there, the grandpa, the, his dad, was elected leader of the prisoners. And he was going to be the spokesperson for them. Wow. And one day the Germans came through and said all Jewish soldiers had come out into the courtyard. And of course, you don't know what that's going to lead oh, to. Oh, yeah, right. So the father, the one that the story's about, said, no, we're all coming out. Christians, mm -hmm. Jews, everybody. So they all came out. Of course, the Germans couldn't figure out who was who. And the German commander said to the grandfather, if you don't tell me which is which, right now I will shoot you. And he had a gun to his head. And the grandfather said, you can shoot me if you want, but we are going to win this war and you will go for war crimes if you do that. And I'm not telling you who's who. You're kidding. And so the German commander put his gun down and stormed off and everybody lived. And so the grandpa, when he came home, didn't tell his son that story very much because he didn't talk was about a private the war. man. Right, right. He didn't right. talk about the war. And then when it was discovered, they realized what he had done and how many he had saved. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And then, they, and wow. Yeah, and so the wow. granddaughter wrote it up for her project, and that's how it became a book, little well, by little. Okay, well, that's, I, I'm yeah. obviously going to get that one. Yeah, yes. this is a very I, good one. Wow, yeah. okay. All right. What do you have? Well, I have one that's very interesting, and it is uh, somebody that we know a lot about, and Mr. Alex Trebek. Yes. Now, this is um, a new um, his new biography um, that he had wrote, obviously, before he uh, passed uh, just recently. Mm -hmm. um, he, um, he, never, he always shied away from writing his memoir or mm -hmm. autobiography. He was asked many times during his career. But he was so overwhelmed by um, the love and support that he got from fans and uh, when he announced that he had the pancreatic cancer mm -hmm. that he wanted to... Um, write a memoir to kind of show people he wanted them to know who was behind who they were supporting or who you know that they loved and it's kind of easy to love him because he was in um in everyone's home every right. five nights a week for right. how many years actually right. since 1984 was it really yeah 1984 wow so since i was two years old and there you go <laughs> so um he pretty much talks about any topic that they ask him, marriage, um, parenthood, success. They even ask him some really uh, good questions like um, they ask him about the legendary players. What is it? Ken oh, Jennings, Ken is Jennings. that right? Okay. Right. Um, and they ask him what his thoughts are on if you've seen Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live, the mm -hmm. Will Ferrell character, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is great. Uh, but they ask, you know, what he thinks about that as well. Right. And then some never before seen photos and, and things like that. Nice. So he's just kind of in a an American icon. So it's yeah. definitely, you know, a must read. That's so, neat. Yeah. Well, he was a very household name. He was, yes. Yeah. And he, he was a good man, he seems. So yeah. That's neat. I'll have to read that. Yeah. Thanks for bringing yeah. that up. Absolutely. Well, I have one um, by John Chet, John Tesh from Hollywood, okay. from um, Entertainment Tonight and okay. from Olympic uh, Announcing. And also okay. he was a musician. But a lot of people don't know that he had a lot of challenges in his life. He really? had cancer at one point that almost took him. He lived in a car, his car, for a number of months really? uh, before he hit the, the big time. Mm -hmm. um, he had uh, other things that kind of held him back and could have really not allowed him to become the household name, like, right, you know, right, like that we, we talked. Yeah. Right. So um, the story is that he, he found a way to overcome those. And, and the key to the book is he's using those challenges as stepping stones to betterment. 
So he's not seeing them as as things that held him back. He's right. seeing them as stepping stones like ladder rung to that get helped. higher and higher. Right. right. And right. that's what his book's about. Um, in fact, when he had stage three cancer, he and his wife decided to turn to treatments, but they didn't work. And so right. they decided to go full boat into their faith and um, scripture. And um, through that, they overcame the disease. And really? so he was able wow. to get past that for, for a good amount of time. Oh, wow, that sounds um, really good. So basically, it's how to use your, your obstacles as stepping stones and not as barriers. That's, wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, so it's a neat book. Really, yeah. that's, that would be perfect for, you know, reading in, in this time that we're kind of dealing with and yeah. just overcoming obstacles. Wow. Yeah, we all need good. hope. Yeah. Do you have another one for I us? I do. I do. And this one I'm really excited about. This is called The Ghosts of Eden Park. Um, the bootleg, the, I'm sorry, the bootleg king, the woman who pursued him, and the murder that shocked Jazz Age America, mm. right? So it's a long title. Um, this one I'm excited about because I think I'm going to use this or pick this as one of the book club picks for this year. Nice. Um, it is by Karen Abbott, and Karen Abbott has uh, written some really, really good biographies. Okay. Um, she has written... Uh, one that we have actually read before in book club uh, that was about women of the Civil War. Nice. It was it was fantastic. Um, so this one I'm really excited um, to dig into because obviously um, Eden Park is speaking of the Eden Park in Cincinnati. Yeah. And this is the story of bootlegger George Remus. Okay. Um, it's a true crime story. He was a German immigrant mm -hmm. who was actually um, a lawyer, and he quit uh, to bootleg whiskey really? in the 1920s. Huh. Yeah. Um, within two years, he was a multimillionaire. Wow. Right? Um, he was known as the king of the bootleggers in the press. Nice. I guess he had an opulent mansion in Cincinnati, which I am going to look up and see if it's still there. I would like to see where, um, in fact, him and his wife uh, lived. They were supposed to have huge lavish parties and would actually give out um cars and diamonds as party favors really right huh. so uh, that's the parties i go to <laughs> right right um at one point he owned 35 percent of the liquor in the united states in the u.s um, in the u.s wow. right um and even the it's the u.s attorney's office hired and this is what mainly the book is about they hired a woman um, right out of law school, who they thought was going to pose no threat to their cozy relationship mm -hmm. with him. And it ended up not being so. Oh. So the interesting, um, the interesting twist, though, is the lawyer, she hires a PI mm -hmm. who ends up having a relationship with his wife. Oh, well. <laughs> while, he's, while Mr. Remus is in prison. Okay. And of course, that brings on, you know, deadly consequences. Yes. So the book is about kind of what happens when you live a lavish, great Gatsby-esque lifestyle. So I think it's going to be really good and so good that, yeah, I think it's going to be one of our Beyond the Book Club picks this year. That's a great idea. So, yeah. Well, we'll look for hearing more about that down the road. Yes, absolutely. So you haven't started yet. You're I just, have not you're started it yet, it. but I will. Yes, yes. Good. I know it'll be good with um, Karen Abbott. She's She's got some great books. So Good. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll look forward to hearing more about that. Absolutely. Well, I've got one that's not nearly as exciting, but it is It is pretty <laughs> exciting. Okay. Um, this is a book about the Civil War times. Okay. And it's called The Zealot and the Emancipator. So the Emancipator, of course, would be Abraham Lincoln. Of course. And the Zealot, in this case, was John Brown. Okay. And they had opposite ways of um, going after the slave question. Right, Obviously right. Obviously, John was about violence. Yes. And at one point, one dark night, he and his men um, pulled several pro-slavery settlers from their homes, and I'll let your imagination lead uh, to yeah, there. Of course. Uh -huh. And Abraham Lincoln, instead of violence, was into politics and wanted to right. solve it peacefully. Right. Um, so he distanced himself from John Brown, even though they both had the same goal to end slavery. Right. He distanced himself from right. him. But what was interesting was um, in this book, they talk about how the South kind of lumped them together and saw them as on the same side. On the same team. Of, right, so, right, right, right. Even right. though they had different though, ways of going right. at it. And so that led to, of course, the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of how these two men approached the question and then what that did to start the Civil War. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, that it, it does. does. Um, I am, I'm a huge, obviously, huge Abe fan. Mm -hmm. I, I've read a lot, actually more than one of his um biographies i Did guess you? you could say yeah um and so th i think that would be really 
really interesting. Yeah, I so, think yeah. it's neat how they attacked a problem differently and yet had the same goal. Right, but radically right. different ways of looking at it. Well, yeah, I mean that's and that's prevalent. That'll always be prevalent, or how right. you know some politics go, obviously. Well, so. like you said, we're dealing with this in modern times too. The same You're right. Questions You're right. are being approached differently. Just differently. Yep. Right. Yep. Wow, so, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So that would be good. Yeah. All right. Okay. This one, I'm really excited about. Okay. It's a big one. Okay. So this <laughs> is Miss Dolly Parton. Okay. Mm. Um, it's called Song Teller. It's her life in lyrics. And as you can see, it's a very big and heavy book. Yes. Um, what's not to love about Miss Dolly? I mean, I just right. want to say that at first. Right. <laughs> but um, basically, you know, she is a, um, she's an icon. She's a, you know, a wonderful songwriter, um, singer, storyteller, actress. Um, and for those of her, you know, hardcore fans, this book basically gives you, um, the stories behind 175 of her songs. Wow. Right. Um, they reveal the personal stories that she went through, um, the memories that inspired. It's She's had a 60-year career. Has she Isn't really? that incredible? That is. That is, yeah. Um, and it's the thing about it that's really interesting is it tells the story in Dolly's way. Oh. So it's very endearing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just kind of, oh, you just want to hear her tell how she, you know, right. in her own words, um, you know, how she likes to create music and, and where it comes from. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I like about Dolly is um, she doesn't, she doesn't shy from a topic. No, I've And she, that. you know, she even has said, whatever it is, I can, I can say it in a song in my way. Wow. And that's, you know, that's, that's how she honest. does things. And you don't, I, what I like about her as well is you don't really see her face all the time telling her opinions about everything. Mm -hmm. She kind of just, like she said, she'll, if she wants to say something, she'll write it in her song. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, and this book, of course, it's, you know, it's so big. It has never before seen photos and memorabilia for nice. the fans out there. Yeah. So, um, it's different in the fact that it's not just a straightforward biography. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's got her songs, her lyrics, you know, it has everything. Um, and she considers herself a songwriter first, what she, she said. Really? Right. So, you know, not, not Dolly Parton, the actress, um, you know, it's, she's a songwriter. Wow. And all the way back from her, you know, Tennessee mountain home right. to present day, um, it's got everything in here. So. Well, and if I'm not mistaken, she's the person behind the, reading library that we're she is and espousing right, here at right. Lebanon Library. Right. At Lebanon Library we have the Imagination Library. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you go to LebanonLibrary.org and sign up your children that are five and under for a free book a month, I believe. I believe that's right. Um, she's a, an amazing philanthropist as yeah. well. So yeah. yeah. So um, I would definitely check this one out. Sounds like yeah. a great book. Right. By, about a good lady. Oh yes, I That's think awesome. I think so. Well, I've got one more to share. So it's okay. about a lady as well. Okay. But she didn't have quite the same career. Okay. Um, she was a CIA agent. Oh wow. Um, and it's about her story of being recruited as a college student and having her hands in some of the most sensitive operations that the CIA did during her time. Wow. She um, was a student at Georgetown School of Foreign Service, and she created an algorithm that predicted when a particular cell, terrorist cell, would go violent. Really? Would erupt or, or come out of their shell. And her algorithm was extremely predict or, uh, accurate and with, with an uncanny certainty that the CIA had picked up on. So they recruited her at the age of 21 to be a CIA agent. You're kidding. No, and at the age of 22, she was fast-tracked to the farm where she, now here's, here's what she had to learn how to do. This amazed me. She spent six months learning with them to use a pistol to get out of handcuffs while locked in the oh. trunk of a car. Oh, my goodness. And to withstand torture and the best way to get out of oh captivity. So she really got trained well. And then she ended up doing some of the most um, important uh, CIA operations of her time. Really? Yeah. So her name is Amaryllis Fox, which sounds like somebody who would... You know, maybe just be at home knitting, but she <laughs> she was uh, cranking the CIA's projects. Wow! Yeah. So I, does it say how old she is now or how long ago that was, I wonder? You know, that's a good question. Okay. I didn't check that out. The book was written in 19, and she has a daughter and is married since then, so I'm not sure when this so took she's place. So probably, it's probably not too, too far. I don't far think it's right. too old, no. Okay. No, because she looks pretty young wow. on the back of her picture. So. Okay, right. Yeah. 
Oh, well, that, that sounds incredible. Yeah, Can you so. imagine that being your schooling? Here, here's a trunk. Right. Put You're you locked in, in there. Right. See you, see you when we see you. <laughs> Dinner's at six. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, that would be interesting to read about. That's very, for sure. Very okay. good book. All right. So I have my last one. Okay. Now, I don't have the physical book with me, but I do have the cover of the audio, which is the same as the physical book. And, of course, this is the highly anticipated release of... Barack Obama's, or former president, Barack Obama's um, presidential memoirs. So this is um, all his. This is what he wrote. This was not another, you know, biographer that came. And this is all um, what he wanted to say um, mm -hmm. about um, how he started as a young man to his improbable rise, basically, as the leader of the free world. Um, it discusses his political education, his, the landmark events from his first term in preg or, um, sorry, presidency. Um, and as we all know, on November 4th, 2008, he made history. He was the 44th president of the United States and the first African-American man to hold that office, mm -hmm. um, which is incredible. Uh, he, uh, he discusses uh, the awesome reach and the limits of presidential power, which I, th I think a lot of us don't really understand or know. We, we still get kind of confused on who calls the shots when and where. So that might be, uh, that, that looked interesting to me to kind of see, you know, who's behind what, basically. Um, and, it, you know, it, we're privy to his thoughts and decisions, uh, you know, such as um, Operation Neptune. And I think that was, uh, had to do with the killing of Osama bin Laden. I think you're right. Yeah. And that, uh, that I would like to know about. That, mm -hmm. that sounds, you know, very interesting. Um, and he talks about, uh, he's very frank about the forces that oppose him. And he, mm -hmm. and he speaks about that. Uh, he also speaks a little on his private life with his wife and his two daughters. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just, it looks like an incredible memoir. It looks mm -hmm. like a very interesting read for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe... This is only about his first term, oh. so I think there's more to come, but yeah. And then for those of you that are interested in audio books, it's, he also narrates. He oh. also tells the story. Okay. So that makes a difference a lot of times when people are telling a story. Because they know where to put the nuances and the right. stresses. Right. So I think, um, I think that's going to be obviously very popular. Nice. So yeah, it's called A Promised Land. And did you say our library owns a hardcover and the audio, obviously? Yes, okay. yes. We own um, physical copies. We also, I also want to um, remind everyone that we do have copies of each and everything that you see on digital downloads as well. So if you see anything you like here today, make sure to go to lebanonlibrary.org and browse our um our catalog, and you'll see request, um, you call us and request anything that you see today that you like, and that's... We'll help you out. And they all have been popular, so I think. Oh, uh, absolutely. Right. They're all newly releases, so yes, they're, everybody's trying to get their, their hands on them. So, right. yeah, and yeah. Okay. Well, great. Including, well, including us. Right. Which obviously, <laughs> so, we, yeah, yeah, we had right. some troubles. Right. Well, good. Well, so, thanks right. for sharing. All right. Well, thank you for your picks. Sure. As well. All right. Coming up next, Mike and I are going to be talking about a driver's ed database. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school and I didn't do it. My support team never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew who I could become as a person. I've been given an opportunity and I'm just thankful for it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. The vaping industry spends millions marketing their products to young people. They think they can fool you with the flavors and packaging, but they don't tell you about the toxic and addictive chemicals inside. 
To learn more, visit sapcwarrencounty.org. Welcome back to the Library Show. We're going to jump in and take a look at an interactive database that we have on our online resources called Driving Tests. Um, I know when I first took a look at this database that it was really, really neat. Um, one of the things I would have loved to have had this as a new driver, um, it's basically, um, what is this, Mike? Tell us a little bit about what we have here. Well, this is, like you said, um, Holly, a driving test uh, online resource, but it mm -hmm. has a little more than that, too. Okay. So okay. should we go to it? Yeah, how do you get there? We'll go to our home page, mm -hmm. and once you're there, go all the way, almost all the way to the right, and go to online resources. Okay. And then since it's called driving test, we'll look under D, and it has the website there. And then, of course, you would you, use, use the, the resource, user resource mm -hmm. right? And then you would want to pick your state the first time. Now, it should remember it after that, but if we pick our state, you would go to Ohio, of course. Now, why do you need to pick a state? Well, because as you know, each state's laws are different. Okay, that's right. Tests, okay, so um, wherever parameters. you're going to be issued, that's right. where you need to so Okay, Kentucky, okay. Indiana, Ohio, wherever you're looking. Okay. And then once you do that, it should remember your state after that. Okay. But it has a picture of what an Ohio driver's license looks like, so oh, some neat. of our yeah. younger drivers may be curious as to what those look like and what information's on them. Because they've changed a lot, haven't they? They have that, since right. we were, right? Yes, yeah. Of course, I'm much older than you, Holly. No. Mine were on paper. <laughs> but um, anyway, it has a lot of identification data, which tells us to stay clear of illegal activities right. because then we won't need to right. produce that. There we go. But anyway, if you look down, it has questions on the official test. It talks about languages available, and there's seven of them. So really? So anybody okay. Okay. in the area should be able to find their language. Mm -hmm. um, it has a test time of 25 minutes. And then it has a days to retake if you fail as one. So it kind of gives you some early on information before you even start, which I thought was nice. That is nice. And then a little bit lower than that on the website, it talks about um, not only the car test that we assume would be on there, but mm -hmm. also a CDL test. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And then also a motorcycle test oh, um, nice. in case you're going for that. Right. Um, and then it has some resources. It has a handbook. It has the Ohio BMV frequently asked questions. It has some driving tips. It also has some resources in Spanish, too. Wow, that's incredible. So there's more, you know, it's, it's named driving test, and that's the main thing, but there's a lot of other things on here. Really? Yeah. So what does, um, I saw in the, when you first clicked on there, the premium, what's the premium login? Well, when you go to it through our website, it would give you the basic, of course, for free. But then okay. if you want to set up your own account and get some of the, the um, more in-depth resources, some of the extra tests, some of the extra simulations, okay. you would have to set up your own account, and that would cost money. Okay. But that's on an individual choice. So it's kind of like our Ancestry Library Edition where we have the free information, but if you want to go above and beyond that, you need to make your own. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's really, you know, how far you want to go with it. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I saw that it had a promise. Do you, you will definitely, what did it say? I thought you will definitely yeah, how pass do they put it? the first time. Pass the first time guarantee. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it sounds nice because yeah. I know that I had some trouble. So what, okay, what kind of tests do they have? Is it mostly just the, the knowledge questions or? Well, it has those as well. Okay. You know, practice test one, two, and three. Um, and then some of these locked sites would be for the premium users. For the premium users, four, okay. Five, six. Okay. Um, and then if you scroll down further, it had those are the easy tests, and it gets into the harder tests. And of course, you have true false road signs would be for free, and then wow. it, some of the locked ones would be for the premium folks. Right. Um, it has a road sign test. Um, there's a free book you can order. It's advertising that right there. Mm -hmm. And then the hardest tests um, are mostly for the premium accounts. Okay. But if you go a little further down, mm -hmm. it does have some simulations. Really. Um, Oh, and that some would be of those fun. can help you in traffic because I know kids get nervous about that part of the test. Absolutely. You know, out there on the road. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, so it does have a lot of those. And of course, once you set up a premium account, if you wish to, it would give you more give access. Give you more, more yeah. access, yes. But yeah. I'm, that's nice that they have those for free, though. I mean, it is. And I think to... they're it's trying to help kids to feel confident taking it and hopefully pass first time, like they said. Well, right. I kind of wish they had that, you know, back in, let's <laughs> yeah. see, 1993. Eight? <laughs> oh, in 1985, yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. right. That would have been really nice. With my horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> um, and I saw, yeah, and not only just for new drivers, right? It, it can be for senior citizen renewal. Right, um, for anyone who's let it lapse. Right. 
Or, oh, you said the CDL. And CDL's then on there too, yep. Motorcycle. Mm -hmm. nice. And I heard a rumor that um, you might have your own. <laughs> right, I did. I have a Class B CDL nice. still. I drove a school bus for King's um, School District when my son was younger. Nice. Um, I, can't, I still can't believe I actually passed, passed on the first time. Um, I even parallel parked that thing. Did by you the, really? Yes, I did, and I, yes, wow. so. A lot of people have told parallel parking a midget car. Right, right. So you Good know, that, to know that this that that's incredible though yeah. that we have that for free on our database. I think that's really interesting. I do too, that's and good. I think people should give it a try and then see if they want to set up a premium account. But give it a try for free first and have your young driver start that right. way. Right, right. Yeah, gain some confidence. I right. like it. Okay. Well, thanks for letting us take a look at that, Mike. Well, thanks for right. helping us to do that. If you're interested in taking a look at driving tests, um, just go to lebanonlibrary.org and t um, click on our online databases, and it will be under D. Um, coming up, we have Miss Connie with a wonderful story time. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Your hometown source, the Lebanon Channel, is now on YouTube. I know how fortunate I am. Just search City of Lebanon, Ohio to connect with everything that's happening right here. And, and that's going to be an exciting part about this walking tour. Subscribe to receive exclusive local content available only on the Lebanon Channel. Wow, Neil Armstrong's coming to my launch. I was so excited about that. That's the City of Lebanon, Ohio, now on YouTube. That's what makes us so. Uh, Lebanon, Ohio, a great yeah, place buddy. to live. Yeah. Hi everyone, it's Miss Connie from the library. I'm glad you're here. Let's have a story. Are you ready to help me wake the book bunny up? All right, let's say those words together. Book bunny, book bunny. It's time for story time to begin. Well, hi book bunny. Can you wave to everybody out there? He's giving you a big bunny wave. All right, shall we see what's inside the mystery box for a clue? You can sing the song with me. Mystery box, mystery box, what's inside the mystery box? Mystery box, mystery box, what's inside the mystery box? All right, let's take a little peek inside that mystery box and we will get a clue about our story. Let's see what's inside. We'll lift the lid off. There are a few objects inside. Let's take a look at the first one. The first one is something that you would wear on your head when it's cold outside. Look at that, it's a hat. The next object is something that you would wear around your neck to keep you warm when it's cold outside. Are you thinking? It is a bright red scarf. And our next object, well, it's actually a vegetable. It's orange, it grows under the ground. Are you thinking? It is a carrot. So today we're going to hear about something that you might build out in the snow, put a hat on its head, wrap a scarf around it, and use a carrot as a nose. It's a snowman, and our story today is called Snowballs. Now, before we begin, I'm gonna to turn to the back of the book, and I'm gonna show you something in the back. The author and illustrator of this book, Lois Ellert, uses objects that you might see in your everyday life to make her illustrations. So you can probably see some different things on the pages, an autumn leaf, a plastic fork, a strawberry, maybe even a wheel from a toy vehicle. So you can be looking for some of those objects as I read the story. And it's called Snowballs. 
Do you think birds know when it's going to snow? I do. The seeds we left out were almost gone. New snow would soon bury the rest. We'd been waiting for a really big snow, saving good stuff in a sack. Finally, it was a perfect snowball day. We rolled three snowballs and made a snow dad. You can see the dad's nose is the strawberry. We added a snow mom and a cool snow boy. And you can see the snow boy's ears are those wheels from a toy truck. Anne made a snow girl. Her smile is a pine cone. And a round snow baby. Can you see what the snow baby's arms and hands are? It's that plastic fork. Built our cat. And to end the day, made our dog Spot. And if you look carefully, you can see that the spots on Spot are buttons. Lots and lots of buttons. Oh, I guess you know what happened when the sun came out. Snow Dad's shrinking. Mom is mush. Boy's a blob. Girl is slush. Baby's melting. Cat's getting small. Dog is a puddle. So long, snowball. That's what happened when the sun comes out. And there we see many of the objects that we saw in the illustrations of the book. Well, thanks everyone for joining me today. I'll see you the next time. Bye. Thanks for watching the library show today. A few reminders. We are committed to bringing our patrons the best possible care that we can at this time. We are open to curbside service for checking out books. The tech center is also available for your printing, copying, and faxing needs. All you need to do is just give us a call at 932-2665 and we can assist you. Also remember to check out our new programming on our new YouTube channel, so be sure and subscribe. You can also find our programming on lebanonlibrary.org homepage. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next month.